Hey there, Becca here from Inside the Square and welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to create creative shapes for a list section in your Squarespace website. In version 7.1, you'll find this list section under the people layouts inside your Squarespace website. What we're going to do is create unique shapes for the individual cards. Now, all the codes I'm about to share are listed in the description below, but we've got a lot of options to cover. So let's hop on into Squarespace and I'll show you how these codes work. Here we are inside Squarespace. Now I do want to mention this is specific for version 7.1 because we're using what's known as an auto layout section and those are only available in the latest version of Squarespace. I have two examples here on my site, but I'm going to go ahead and hop into edit mode to show you how I actually created this section. These auto layout sections known as list sections can be found when you add a section and select the pre-made layouts for people. If you see this little eye on the top right hand corner, that means it's an auto layout. Most of the list sections inside the people section here are actually list sections and that's what we're using. Notice that this one doesn't have an eye, this one does. Those are auto layout list sections. When you create an auto layout, you'll have the opportunity to edit content. We don't add content blocks like we do for a regular section. These auto layouts take the content that we place here and create an automatic layout. Now for this tutorial, I've selected a carousel and I also have, if we scroll down here, a simple list section. The codes that we're using will work for both of those options. So when you've created your list section, select edit content and under the design tab, make sure you've either selected carousel or simple list. That changes the way content is displayed. Alrighty, let's say we've got one ready to go. I'll go ahead and select save and we're going to navigate to design and then scroll down to custom CSS. That's where we're going to paste the code from this tutorial. So I have a few pre-made examples for us. One of the first is one of my favorites, a super easy code called a border radius. That's gonna curve the edges of these list section items. I'm gonna paste this code right here, and it says list item border radius 25%. It's gonna pull it in 25% from the edge. I can also say 25px if I want it to be equidistant. Now check it out, I've got this going on for this carousel section, but if we scroll down, the simple list is also being changed. This will work for any type of list section, carousel, or simple. Now we can also change different corners. This code right here applies a border radius to all corners, but what if we say 25px, 0px? We'll scroll up here and see. We've got a curve on the top left and the bottom right corner, but then we have a 90 degree angle on the top right and bottom left. We can reverse that as well. If we want to say 0px, 25px, what we're going to do here is have 90 degrees on the top left and bottom right, and then that 25px curve on the top right and bottom left. Pretty cool, right? All right, now I've got another cool code I want to share with you, and that's called a clip path. I've used this in a tutorial in the past and got some great results, so I wanted to share this one with you here. We're going to be creating a clip path, which changes the entire shape of that section. We're essentially clipping away a percentage here to create this parallelogram. Now we can totally change these values to be maybe 10% and 90%, for example. Notice how the shape is slightly changing as we're doing this. Let's say we make it 25 and 75. We're gonna get another different angle there. In this case, the button's kind of going off the edge. I don't like that very much. I'll go ahead and leave it at 15 and 85. Play around with that clip path until it looks perfect for your own site style. Now, last but not least, I wanted to mention changing individual list items. That's what I've got going on with this code right here. I'm gonna remove the work we've done and I'm gonna place this whole code right here into custom CSS and I want you to notice what happens. We have a curve for the very first item on the top left corner and bottom left corner. And then on the last item, we have a curve on the top right and bottom right. Now what we're doing here with code is saying, hey, when you see a list item, take the very first one and give it that border radius. And then we've also said, when you see the very last one, give it this border radius. I've added exclamation point important to make sure the browser pays attention to our code. So again, this code only affects the very first and the very last. I thought that was a cool technique for a simple list section. The reason why I've said simple list and not carousel is with a carousel, you can scroll through different items here. So now you'll notice the first item in the list is no longer visible. So that curve isn't going to apply to it. It's going to be the first item no matter what. Now I also have this set to infinite scroll. So there is no last item. So that's why I recommend using this curved code only for simple list. If you're gonna target the first of type and last of type, a simple list is the type of design that you want to go for. 
Now, before we call this tutorial a wrap, we've got to talk about mobile because this style does not look great on mobile. Check out the mobile view of our site here. We have the curve for the first one, nothing for the middle and the curve for the last. It looks pretty strange. So if I scroll down here, we're actually going to add this code to the beginning and then this bracket to the end of the code that we have. So I'm going to paste this in the very beginning. And then down here, I'm going to enter a new line and close that curly bracket. And if we scroll up, you'll see that the list item corners are a 90 degree angle on mobile, but on desktop, they're curved with that same effect that we had started with. Pretty cool, right? This code says only apply that to a smaller screen. Now, before we call this tutorial done, let's say you only wanted this to apply to an individual list. I've got two lists on this page, so this code is still being applied to this very first list. If we scroll all the way back to the very first one, you'll see that curved edge. I only want to apply this to an individual list. I'm going to use a free Chrome extension, not affiliated with them, just a fan, to grab the data section ID. I clicked on the Chrome extension, and now I can see this is the name of this simple list section. So I'm gonna grab that data section ID, I'll turn off the Chrome extension, and inside my code, right before the word list item, I'm going to add the data section ID and a space. And I'll do that to the second one as well. There we go. Now we have this curve happening for this specific section, but if we scroll up, you'll notice this has gone back to normal. This code is only affecting the data section that we called out by its own unique name, its data section ID. Just remember to place that in two places in your code here, before the list item first of type and before the list item last of type. After you've made your changes, select save and you'll be good to go. Alrighty, that's it for this tutorial. And again, those codes are listed in the description below. If you liked this video, give me a like and a comment and definitely subscribe to my channel because I post a brand new tutorial every single week and I wanna make sure you catch the latest. And if you're brand new to all things CSS, head on over to insidethesquare.co forward slash learn. There you can catch my free class on the basics of customizing your Squarespace website with code. That's insidethesquare.co forward slash learn. Thanks again for watching and most importantly, have fun with your Squarespace website. Bye for now. If you liked this tutorial, you're gonna love my Squarespace CSS cheat sheet. I put all of my custom codes and pro tips inside one gigantic PDF available now at insidethesquare.co forward slash CSS. That's insidethesquare.co forward slash CSS.